Synapsids, synonymous with thrapsids, are a group of animals that includes mammals and every animal more closely related to mammals than to other living amniotes. They are easily separated from other amniotes by having a temporal fenestra, an opening low in the skull roof behind each eye, leaving a bony arch beneath each. This accounts for their name. Primitive synapsids are usually called pelicosaurs or pelicosaur grade synapsids. More advanced mammal like ones, therapsids. The non mammalian members are described as mammal like reptiles in classical systematics. They can also be called stem mammals or proto mammals. Synapsids evolved from basal amniotes and are one of the two major groups of the later amniotes. The other is the sauropsids, a group that includes modern reptiles and birds. The distinctive temporal fenestra developed in the ancestral synapsid about 312 million years ago, during the late Carboniferous period. Synapsids were the largest terrestrial vertebrates in the Permian period, 299 to 251 million years ago, although some of the larger parousaurs at the end of Permian could match them in size. As with other groups then extant, their numbers and variety were severely reduced by the Permian Euro Triassic extinction. By the time of the extinction at the end of Permian, all the older forms of synapsids known as pelicosaurs were already gone, having been replaced by the more advanced therapsids. Though the dicynodonts and eutheriodontia, the latter consisting of eutherocephalia and epicynodontia, continued into the Triassic period as the only known surviving therapsids, archosaurs became the largest and most numerous land vertebrates in the course of this period. The cynodont group Probanognithia, which includes mammaliaeforms, was the only synapsids who outlasted the Triassic. After the Cretaceous a Europaleogen extinction event, the synapsids again became the largest land animals. The only extant synapsids today are mammals. Linnaean and cladistic classifications. Equals synapsids as a reptilian subclass equals. Synapsids were originally defined at the turn of the 20th century as one of the four main subclasses of reptiles, on the basis of their distinctive temporal openings. These openings in the cheekbones allowed the attachment of larger jaw muscles, hence a more efficient bite. Synapsids were considered to be the reptilian lineage that led to mammals. They gradually evolved increasingly mammalian features, hence the name mammal-like reptiles, which became a broad, traditional description for all non-mammalian synapsids. Equals the mammal-like reptiles equals, the traditional classification of synapsids as reptiles is continued by some paleontologists. In the 1990s, this approach was complemented by a cladistic one, according to which the only valid groups are those that include common ancestors and all of their descendants, these are known as monophyletic groups, or clads. Phylogenetically, Synapsids are the entire synapsid mammal branch of the tree of life, though in practice the term is most often used when referring to the reptile-grade synapsids. The term mammal-like reptiles represents a paraphyletic grade, but is commonly used both colloquially and in the technical literature to refer to all non-mammalian synapsids. The actual monophyly of synapsida is not in doubt, however, and the expression synapsida contains the mammals and synapsids gave rise to the mammals, both expressed the same phylogenetic hypothesis. Equals primitive and advanced synapsids equals, the synapsids are traditionally divided into a primitive group and an advanced group, known respectively as pelicosaurs and therapsids. Pelicosaurs make up the six most primitive families of synapsids. They were all rather lizard-like, with sprawling gait and possibly horny scuts. The therapsids contain the more advanced synapsids, having a more erect pose and possibly hair, at least in some forms. In traditional taxonomy, the synapsida encompasses two distinct grades successively closer to mammals. The low slung pelicosaurs have given rise to the more erect therapsids, who in their turn have given rise to the mammals. In traditional vertebrate classification, the Pelicosauria and Therapsida were both considered orders of the subclass Synapsida. In phylogenetic nomenclature, the terms are used somewhat differently, as the daughter clads are included. Most papers published during the 21st century have treated Pelicosauria as an informal grouping of primitive members. 
Theropsida has remained in use as a clade containing both the traditional theropsid families and mammals. However, in practical usage, the terms are used almost exclusively when referring to the more basal members that lie outside of mammalia forms. Characteristics equals Temporal openings equals Synapsids evolved a temporal fenestra behind each eye orbit on the lateral surface of the skull. It may have provided new attachment sites for jaw muscles. A similar development took place in the diapsids, which evolved two rather than one opening behind each eye. Originally, the openings in the skull left the inner cranium covered only by the jaw muscles, but in higher theropsids and mammals, the sphenoid bone has expanded to close the opening. This has left the lower margin of the opening as an arch extending from the lower edges of the brain case. Equals teeth equals. Synapsids are characterized by having differentiated teeth. These include the canines, molars, and incisors. The trend towards differentiation is found in some labyrinthodonts and early anapsid reptilians in the form of enlargement of the first teeth on the maxilla, forming a form of protoconines. This trait was subsequently lost in the sauropsid line, but developed further in the synapsids. Early synapsids could have two or even three enlarged canines, but in the theropsids, the pattern had settled to one canine in each upper jaw half. The lower canines developed later. Equals jaw equals, the jaw transition is a good classification tool, as most other fossilized features that make a chronological progression from a reptile-like to a mammalian condition follow the progression of the jaw transition. The mandible, or lower jaw, consists of a single, tooth-bearing bone in mammals, whereas the lower jaw of modern and prehistoric reptiles consists of a conglomeration of smaller bones. As they evolved in synapsids, these jaw bones were reduced in size and either lost or, in the case of the articula, gradually moved into the ear, forming one of the middle ear bones, while modern mammals possess the malus, incus and stapes, mammal-like reptiles possess only a stapes. The malus is derived from the articula, while the incus is derived from the quadrate. Mammalian jaw structures are also set apart by the dentary squamosal jaw joint. In this form of jaw joint, the dentary forms a connection with a depression in the squamosal known as the glenoid cavity. In contrast, all other jawed vertebrates, including reptiles and non-mammalian synapsids, possess a jaw joint in which one of the smaller bones of the lower jaw, the articula, makes a connection with a bone of the cranium called the quadrate bone to form the articular quadrate jaw joint. In forms transitional to mammals, the jaw joint is composed of a large, lower jaw bone that does not connect to the squamosal, but connects to the quadrate with a receding articular bone. Equals palate equals, over time, as synapsids became more mammalian and less reptilian, they began to develop a secondary palate, separating the mouth and nasal cavity. In early synapsids, a secondary palate began to form on the sides of the maxilla, still leaving the mouth and nostril connected. Eventually, the two sides of the palate began to curve together, forming a U-shape instead of a C-shape. The palate also began to extend back toward the throat, securing the entire mouth and creating a full palatine bone. The maxilla is also closed completely. In fossils of one of the first eutheriodonts, the beginnings of a palate are clearly visible. The later three Naxodon has a full and completely closed palate, forming a clear progression. Equals skin and fur equals. In addition to the glandular skin covered in fur found in most modern mammals, modern and extinct synapsids possess a variety of modified skin coverings, including osteoderms, scuts, hair or fur, and scale-like structures. While the skin of reptiles is rather thin, that of mammals has a thick dermal layer. The ancestral skin type of synapsids has been subject to discussion. Among the early synapsids, only two species of small varanopids have been found to possess scuts. Fossilized rows of osteoderms indicate horny armor on the neck and back, and skin impressions indicate some possessed rectangular scuts on their undersides and tails. The pelicosal scuts probably were non-overlapping dermal structures with a horny overlay, like those found in modern crocodiles and turtles. These differed in structure from the scales of lizards and snakes, which are an epidermal feature. It is currently unknown exactly when mammalian characteristics such as body hair and mammary glands first appeared, 
as the fossils only rarely provide direct evidence for soft tissues. An exceptionally well-preserved skull of Estemonosuchus, a theropsid from the upper Permian, preserves smooth skin with what appear to be glandular depressions. The oldest known fossil showing unambiguous imprints of hair is the Colovian castora corda, a non-mammalian mammalia form. More primitive members of the Cynodontia are also hypothesized to have had fur or a fur-like covering based on their inferred warm-blooded metabolism. While more direct evidence of fur in early cynodonts has been proposed in the form of small pits on the snout possibly associated with whiskers, such pits are also found in some reptiles that lack whiskers. There is evidence that some other non-mammalian cynodonts more basal than Castora corda, such as Morganucodon, had hardirian glands, which are associated with the grooming and maintenance of fur. The apparent absence of these glands in non-mammalia forms may suggest that fur did not originate until that point in synapsid evolution. It is possible that fur and associated features of true warm-bloodedness did not appear until some synapsids became extremely small and nocturnal, necessitating a higher metabolism. Equals metabolism equals. The first pelicosaurs had the usual reptilian cold-blooded metabolism by all indications including a sprawling gait and a low-slung body. However, there appears to have been an early trend towards a form of temperature regulation in several pelicosal lines, as indicated by the large sales in both Edaphrosaurids and some Sphenacodontids. The Sphenacodontids gave rise to the Theropsids, which lacked the sail and may have controlled their body temperatures using metabolic heat. The legs and feet of the early Theropsid groups point to a more erect posture, traditionally interpreted as a sign of more efficient metabolism. The presence of large turbinates acting as moisture traps in the nasal passage found in Therosophalian and Cynodont theropsids, but not in pelicosaurs, is additional evidence for the shift in metabolism in these groups. In the later Cynodonts, the presence of a secondary palate, erect posture and other indicators of high metabolic rates suggests many mammalian features had evolved by this stage. The high metabolism of the advanced forms forced the evolution of hair only when mouse-sized animals evolved in the synapsid mammal transition. Evolutionary history Archaeothery and Clepsidrops, the earliest known synapsids, lived in the Pennsylvanian subperiod of the Carboniferous period and belonged to the series of primitive synapsids which are conventionally grouped as pelicosaurs. The pelicosaurs spread and diversified becoming the largest terrestrial animals in the latest Carboniferous and early Permian periods, ranging up to 6 meters in length. They were sprawling, bulky, and cold-blooded, and had small brains. Some, such as Dimetrodon, had large sails that may have helped raise their body temperature. A few relict groups lasted into the later Permian but, by the middle of the late Permian, all of the pelicosaurs had either died off or evolved into their successors, the theropsids. The theropsids, a more advanced group of synapsids, appeared during the Middle Permian and included the largest terrestrial animals in the Middle and Late Permian. They included herbivores and carnivores, ranging from small animals the size of a rat, to large, bulky herbivores a ton or more in weight. After flourishing for many millions of years, these successful animals were all but wiped out by the Permian Triassic mass extinction about 250 myr, the largest known extinction in Earth's history, which may have been related to the Siberian Traps volcanic event. Only a few theropsids went on to be successful in the new early Triassic landscape. They include Lystrosaurus and Cynognathus, the latter of which appeared later in the early Triassic. Now, however, they were accompanied by the early archosaurs. Some of these, such as Eparcheria, were small and lightly built, while others, such as Erythrosuchus, were as big as or bigger than the largest theropsids. After the Permian extinction, the synapsids did not count more than three surviving clads. The first were the Therosophalians, which only lasted the first 20 million years of the Triassic period. The second survivors were specialized, beaked herbivores known as Dicynodonts contained some members that reached large size. And finally there were the increasingly mammal-like carnivorous, herbivorous, and insectivorous cynodonts, including the Eocynodonts from the Olenekian age, an early representative of which was Cynognathus. Unlike the Dicynodonts, 
which remained large, the cynodonts became progressively smaller and more mammal-like as the Triassic progressed, though some forms like Trucidocynodon remained large-sized. The first mammalia forms evolved from the cynodonts during the early Norian age of the late Triassic, about 225 Myr. During the evolutionary succession from early theropsid to cynodont to eosynodont to mammal, the main lower jaw bone, the dentary, replaced the adjacent bones. Thus, the lower jaw gradually became just one large bone, with several of the smaller jaw bones migrating into the inner ear and allowing sophisticated hearing. Whether through climate change, vegetation change, ecological competition, or a combination of factors, most of the remaining large cynodonts and dicynodonts had disappeared by the Rauschen age, even before the Triassic Jurassic extinction event that killed off most of the large non dinosaurian archosaurs. The remaining Mesozoic synapsids were small, ranging from the size of a shrew to the badger like mammal Repinomamus. During the Jurassic and Cretaceous, the remaining non mammalian cynodonts were small, such as Tritilodon. No cynodont grew larger than a cat. Most Jurassic and Cretaceous cynodonts were herbivorous, though some were carnivorous. The family Trithaledon today first appeared near the end of the Triassic. They were carnivorous and persisted well into the Middle Jurassic. The other, Tritolodon today, first appeared at the same time as the Trithaledonts, but they were herbivorous. This group became extinct at the end of the early Cretaceous epoch. Dicynodonts are thought to have become extinct near the end of the Triassic period, but there is evidence this group survived. New fossil finds have been found in the Cretaceous rocks of Gondwana. Today, the 5,500 species of living synapsids, known as the mammals, include both aquatic and flying species, and the largest animal ever known to have existed. Humans are synapsids, as well. Unique among the synapsids, however, most mammals are viviparous and give birth to live young rather than laying eggs, with the exception of the Minochms. Triassic and Jurassic ancestors of living mammals, along with their close relatives, had high metabolic rates. This meant consuming food in much greater quantity. To facilitate rapid digestion, these synapsids evolved mastication and specialized teeth that aided chewing. Limbs also evolved to move under the body instead of to the side, allowing them to breathe more efficiently during locomotion. This helped make it possible to support their higher metabolic demands. Relationships Below is a cladogram of the most commonly accepted phylogeny of synapsids, showing a long stem lineage including mammalia and successively more basal clads such as Theriodontia, Theropsida, and Spinacodontia. Most uncertainty in the phylogeny of synapsids lies among the earliest members of the group, including forms traditionally placed within Pelicosauria. As one of the earliest phylogenetic analyses, Brinkman and Eberth placed the family Veronopidae with Cassisphria as the most basal offshoot of the synapsid lineage. Rice removed Veronopidae from Cassisphria, placing it in a more derived position on the stem. While most analyses find Cassisphria to be the most basal synapsid clade, the analysis of Benson placed a clade containing Ophiacodontidae and Veronopidae as the most basal synapsids, with Cassisphria occupying a more derived position. Benson attributed this revised phylogeny to the inclusion of postcranial characteristics, or features of the skeleton other than the skull, in his analysis. When only cranial or skull features were included, Cassisphria remained the most basal synapsid clade. Below is a cladogram modified from the analysis of Benson. See also, Anapsida, Dilpsida, Ariapsida, List of synapsids, Mammal classification, Prehistoric mammal, Timeline of evolution, Vertebrate paleontology. References Further reading, Colbert, E. H. Evolution of the Vertebrates. New York John Wiley and Sons Incorporated. ISBN 0-471-16466-6. External links, Synapsida, Pelicosauria, at Palaos, Transitional Vertebrate Fossils, includes description of important transitional genera in the evolutionary sequence linking primitive synapsids to mammals.